On February 22nd, at around 5.30 a.m., a bridge in Guangzhou was struck by a vessel, leading to the rupture of the bridge. According to the Guangzhou Maritime Administration, an empty container ship struck the Li Xinxia Bridge in Wangqingxia Town, Nansha District of Guangzhou. Due to improper navigation, the port side of the vessel touched Pier 18 of the Li Xinxia Bridge while passing through. Then the bow of the ship once again touched Pier 19, resulting in the rupture of the bridge deck on that span. Surveillance footage show unaware drivers driving into the breach. According to official reports, verified by the afternoon, a total of five vehicles drove into the rupture. One empty minibus, one truck, and one electric motorcycle fell into the ship's hold, while two small trucks fell into the water. As of 5 p.m., five deaths have been reported, and two people have been rescued. During the incident, a driver of a container truck stopped his vehicle before the breach. He turned on hazard lights and warned vehicles behind not to proceed. He even positioned his 15-meter-long truck horizontally to block the intersection, thus preventing further tragedies. Footage from the scene reveals that the bridge of the offending vessel was deformed from the impact. The vehicles that fell into the ship suffered severe damage, resembling a pile of scrap metal. The person responsible for the vessel has been apprehended. However, according to Chinese media, the Guangzhou Nansha Xingxia Bridge had anti-collision devices installed last year. The report cited a 2023 paper published in the journal Bridge Construction. The Li Xingxia Bridge, completed in 1992, has a total length of 787 meters, and the main bridge span is composed of sections of 55, 85, and 55 meters. The original design had a grade 2 highway load rating, with increased traffic after construction. Although it had undergone repairs and reinforcements, the upgrade of the Hangqi Lishi Waterway navigational grade from Grade 3 to Grade 1 increased the risk of bridge pier impacts by vessels. To enhance the bridge's collision resistance, measures were proposed for Pier 16 to 19 of the main bridge navigational spans. The paper also stated that the installation of composite wave attenuating plate steel collision prevention devices on the Guangzhou Li Xingxia Bridge was completed in April 2023. The faces of these devices had significant deformation after vessel collision. Therefore, only the impacted faces needed to be replaced, reducing maintenance costs. The authors of the paper belong to the China Railway Construction Corporation, Suzhong Command Headquarters. However, a report by CCTV contradicted the above paper, stating that the installation of attached collision devices had not been completed. The Li Xingxia Bridge is located in Wangqingxia Town, Nansha District, Guangzhou, Guangdong Province, and is a reinforced concrete highway bridge. It was completed and opened to traffic in 1994, with a total length of over 780 meters spanning the Hongqi Li Xi Waterway. It connects Wangqingxia Town with the Sanming Island area and serves as the only land route for island residents. According to data from the Guangzhou Nansha Maritime Affairs Bureau, the reinforcement and upgrading work was scheduled to take place between April and September 2022. However, Guangzhou authorities later issued three consecutive announcements about delays in the project. Eventually, they extended the operation period until August 31, 2024. These announcements offered no explanations for the delays. Local Chinese Communist Party officials prioritized upgrading the waterway, but continuously postponed upgrades for the Li Xingxia Bridge. This incident immediately sparked speculations among Chinese netizens about shoddy construction projects. Netizens commented, An empty ship can break a bridge pier. One can imagine the quality of this construction. It is highly likely the fault lies with the bridge side. Any bridge design would consider collision prevention. Now this bridge collapses with just one hit. No one responsible for the bridge can escape. Some angrily remarked, Tofu Bridge Piers? A professional commented on NetEase, More than half of the responsibility lies with the bridge design unit. The construction owner, review company, and water administrative approval unit have also undeniable responsibilities. The ship owner should bear secondary responsibility. It's unfair to put all the blame on the ship owner. A similar accident occurred in Guangdong 17 years ago. The Zhejiang Bridge, with a length of 1,682 meters and a cost of over 100 million yuan, was opened to traffic in 1988. However, on June 15, 2007, it collapsed after being struck by a ship carrying sand, and the ship's crew were criminally detained. 
The article pointed out that the ship was unexpectedly sturdier than the bridge. One has to admire the shipbuilder's skills. On February 21st, a viral video showed the collapse of a ceiling at the outpatient hall of the First People's Hospital in Sutran City, Jiangsu Province. The collapsed building was about four to five stories high, and debris fell to the ground floor, including tiles, aluminum alloy materials, cement blocks, and metal beams. On that day, the First People's Hospital of Sutran City issued a report confirming this news, stating that on February 20th, the skylight above the outpatient hall fell off but did not cause any casualties. Regarding this news, some netizens commented, the hospital, a place to save lives, collapsed, and internal news is still not allowed to be released. Some said, there is no snow this time, why is it getting worse? Such shoddy construction. This is a hospital. Some netizens believe that due to irresponsible construction, all kinds of construction quality problems will emerge in the next five years. According to public reports, the First People's Hospital of Sutran City received the prestigious Luban Prize for Chinese construction projects in 2016-2017. The hospital proudly announced that this was the first project in Sutran City to win the Luban Prize. They described the overall design concept of the hospital as the river of life, the boat of hope. In this design, the inpatient building represents a sail, while the outpatient and comprehensive buildings symbolize a boat, conveying the message of hope for life. The total construction area is 217,812 square meters, with one underground floor and 21 above-ground floors, with a total building height of 99.6 meters. It's ironic that buildings that have won quality engineering awards collapse, let alone those who haven't. The Luban Prize was named after the, the Zhou Dynasty Chinese architect, engineer, and inventor Lu Ban. Chinese netizens mocked that Lu Ban would probably spit blood. Shoddy construction projects have long been commonplace in China, leading to numerous accidents and countless innocent lives lost. In China, projects costing hundreds of millions or even billions of yuan often turn out to be shoddy. The Jijing Expressway Ramp Bridge project, completed in 2005 with a cost of 495 million yuan, collapsed four years later. The break occurred just 800 meters from the Gangtang toll station of the Jijing Expressway, causing five cargo trucks to fall, resulting in six deaths and four injuries. The Wuyishan Gonggang Bridge in Fujian, completed on November 20, 1999, with a total length of 301 meters and a width of 18 meters, cost over 17 million yuan. It collapsed on July 14, 2011, less than 12 years after completion and opening. Nearly 50 meters of the bridge collapsed, resulting in one death. The Yangmintan Bridge in the Songhua River in Harbin, Heilongjiang, completed on November 6, 2011, collapsed less than a year after opening. On August 24, 2012, at 5 o'clock in the morning, residents near the bridge heard a deafening sound. They rushed to the scene and found that a section of the approach bridge had overturned. Four trucks were completely deformed in the collapse, resulting in three deaths and five injuries. It is reported that the budget for the bridge reached 1.9 billion yuan, but in reality, this was far exceeded. The official investigation blamed the accident on severe vehicle overloading. However, an insider posted online in early September that year. They revealed that before the collapse, the bridge's pier had already tilted, especially the middle one, which was three centimeters lower. This caused the support to become a weak joint between the bridge deck and the pier. Even before concrete was poured during construction, the bridge deck had already tilted and had to be balanced using multiple jacks. Still, overloading was indeed the main cause of the collapse. Moreover, the construction and supervision teams had complex relationships with the deputy mayor of Harbin, responsible for urban construction, and most of the people involved in the accident investigation. When consultants arrived to investigate the accident in Harbin, they were immediately taken to the Shangri-La Hotel, where the cause of the accident was already decided over dinner. Hence, the investigation results couldn't possibly be accurate. According to the Beijing Times report, the Harbin Municipal Government website previously released news that the Yangmintan Bridge Relief Project had changed its structure, replacing the original concrete structure with a steel concrete structure, shortening the construction period and saving 200 million yuan. A bridge expert who declined to be named told a reporter from Beijing Times that the biggest difference between concrete structures and steel concrete structures lies in weight, with concrete being much heavier than steel. Concrete needs to be poured and set, while steel structures only need to be tied, saving time. 
This expert also analyzed that the main cause of this collapse was the issue of balance. Concrete structures are much more stable than steel concrete structures because of the difference in weight. A heavier object will resist forces better. In the case of the bridge, the weight is concentrated on one side, resulting in the collapse. Moreover, in the collapsed section of the approach bridge, wood, woven bags, and other debris were found inside the bridge, confirming it as a blatant case of shoddy construction. The Chinese authorities' official explanation of this accident is even more surprising. According to their investigation, they blame the accident solely on severe vehicle overloading. They said the ramp overturned due to the overload, causing vehicles to fall and resulting in a significant road traffic accident with casualties. However, they didn't mention any issues with the bridge's quality itself. Some truckers disagreed, saying overloading couldn't be the only cause, and authorities should look into the bridge's design and quality. Bridge experts also disagreed with the investigation, most of them believing it was a design flaw that caused the collapse. Another expert felt it was wrong to call it a major traffic accident. If a vehicle collided with the bridge, it might be considered a traffic accident, but since the bridge collapsed suddenly while vehicles were traveling normally, it is not related to traffic at all. The Qianjiang Third Bridge in Hangzhou, built in December 1993, with a total length of 5,700 meters and a main span of 1,280 meters, with six lanes in each direction, is one of the important passages connecting the old city of Hangzhou with the Bingjiang, Xiaoshan, and Xiaoshan International Airport areas. The bridge was opened to traffic in January 1997 with a total investment of 600 million yuan. It was hailed as Zhejiang's first modern cable-stayed bridge with world-class standards, and also claimed to be China's first double-tower, single-cable surface, cable-stayed bridge, accumulating many honors. However, hidden problems gradually emerged after the opening. In March of the same year, the bridge passed inspection by the Zhejiang Provincial Department of Transportation. Then it was put into trial operation for more than a year before it was officially put into use. Afterward, the only news about the bridge involved regular repairs. According to publicly available information, from September 2005 to October 2006, the Qianjiang Third Bridge underwent a one-year semi-closed major repair and landscape reconstruction. On July 11 and 12, 2008, the Qianjiang Third Bridge was closed twice for comprehensive inspection of the bridge deck. From June 14 to 17, 2009, the bridge underwent a three-day full closure for a comprehensive examination. Then, on July 15, 2011, it collapsed. On August 13, 2007, a particularly serious collapse occurred at the Dashi River Bridge under construction in Fenghuang County, Hunan Province, resulting in 64 deaths, 4 serious injuries, 18 minor injuries, and direct economic losses of almost 40 million yuan. The Zhengding Zilong Bridge in Shijiazhuang, which took a total of 238 million yuan and two years to build, had about 400 meters of stone guardrail blown down in June 2011. Rather than a tornado or storm, the weather forecast reported a wind of only level 4. The Gansu Tianding Expressway cost 8.7 billion yuan and was once hailed as the Great Hope of Gansu's Eastern Gateway. It began rework less than three months after opening. The road surface showed settlement, cracks, and pits of various sizes that were unavoidable for vehicles traveling at high speeds. Sina.com.cn described it as decisively ranking first among shoddy projects. The Yunnan Shinsan Highway started construction in October 2009 and is known as the shortest lived highway in history because it collapsed the day after it opened. However, Chinese experts attributed it to weather conditions, claiming there was no problem with the project. On May 8, 2021, a bridge being built on the hangzhou shaoxing taizhou Expressway in Zhejiang Province collapsed. The bridge deck fell into the river, burying a crane. Officials said there were no casualties. The expressway is about 162.3 kilometers long, costing around 36.8 billion yuan, making it Shaoxing's largest infrastructure project. Jiangsu Provincial Transportation Engineering Group Company is handling the construction. Locals criticized it online, calling it a shoddy project. They said, luckily, it collapsed before being accepted. Otherwise, many people would suffer. These are just some of the cases mentioned. Every year in China, there are many incidents of innocent people being harmed due to shoddy construction projects. 
Why is it that despite adequate budgets and considerable investments, the end result is still shoddy construction? In fact, this is closely related to the serious corruption in the construction industry. These high costs and rapid collapses are quite explosive phenomena in the world of shoddy construction. When talking about shoddy construction, one cannot fail to mention cutting corners. An article published by NetEase in 2021 pointed out money saved by cutting corners would end up in the pockets of those involved in the project. There are many forms of corruption. One common practice is illegal subcontracting. Due to the lucrative nature of the construction industry, many bosses invest in it, leading to oversaturation and intense competition. This creates opportunities for certain leaders within construction units to showcase their skills. They leverage their authority to secure projects and profit from them. To win bids, these companies portray themselves as experienced and reputable. However, once they secure a project, they can't afford the financial risk alone. Consequently, they subcontract all the work to others. At this point, there is not much money left, but everyone in this chain wants to make a profit. By the time the money reaches the construction team, there is not much left. The budget is insufficient, the requirements are high, and the quality of the work is compromised. Another issue is leadership intervention, which occurs during the bidding process. Individuals in positions of power seek to maximize their earnings beyond fixed salaries by employing administrative intervention tactics. Essentially, the project goes to the bidder offering the most benefits, leaving others with no option. Consequently, this allows unscrupulous companies to enter projects directly, resulting in a notable decline in work quality. The third is to over-budget. They do not follow regulations for pricing and budgeting, but collude with subcontractors to increase the cost, then pocket the difference. Another issue is that the construction department does not act according to policies. Many construction departments have the habit of taking a cut before work is done. After taking it, they exaggerate the difficulties during the construction process. When the project reaches the final acceptance stage, these subcontractors promise that there will be no problems, and leaders accept these words along with their bribes. Once money is exchanged and glasses are raised, policies also become more lenient. The article points out that these construction units, when carrying out projects, may appear to be openly tendered, but in reality, many are just going through the motions. Ultimately, the winner of the bid is predetermined from the start. In this process, there are many supervisory personnel in China who collude with subcontractors, engaging in deceit and fraud. They are essentially two sides of the same coin. The article mentions that throughout the entire process, money is the most powerful tool. As long as the money is in place, and a few dirty tricks are used to drive others away, the quality can be deemed acceptable. This also indicates whenever there's a shoddy construction project, Everyone is implicated from top to bottom. Some disgraced officials willingly act as umbrellas for these construction parties, thereby creating more and more quality and safety issues. Speaking of China's shoddy construction projects, one cannot fail to mention the Wenchuan earthquake on May 12, 2008. That year, a staggering number of school buildings collapsed due to the earthquake, resulting in over tens of thousands of children losing their lives. From the ruins after the earthquake, people saw that most of the collapsed school buildings were due to shoddy construction. Why, after so many bloody lessons, do shoddy construction projects persist? It's all about interests. Another reason is that under the CCP's totalitarian rule and atheistic brainwashing, there is a lack of moral belief among people, causing them to exist only for profit. For money, people have entered into a mode of mutual harm. In today's mainland China, the phenomenon of fake goods is widespread and undeniable. Fake diplomas, fake news, fake data, fake achievements. It's no wonder that some media outlets have said that when it comes to China's fakery, it can apply for a Guinness record. Of course, it doesn't stop there. Fake infant formula, counterfeit drugs, artificial eggs, artificial meat, and other food counterfeiting practices that are closely related to people's lives are also rampant. Therefore, whether it's dodging shoddy construction projects, fake infant formula, or fake food, there are pitfalls everywhere, and for the Chinese, living peacefully is truly difficult.